welcome, welcome, welcome to episode 86 of Planning Face Syndicate. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight. We have a pleasure of a show here for you. Tonight, we're going to be talking about a fun little tournament I was in called Shikuffalo. That was an online tournament for this weekend. We're also going to be doing some pilot rankings, talking a little bit about Kyber Cup, and we are going to do a continuation of our list type, list archetypes series for our Academy 101. Unfortunately, JJ uh, could not get off the road in time tonight, so JJ will not be joining us, at least for the majority of the show. He will be here in spirit, but just not in fun. Let's bring in my co-host for tonight. Mr. Alex, his Obi-Wan never lives except for when he doesn't need him to. How are you tonight, sir? Oh, I'm okay. How are you? <laughs> good. Good. It's, a, it's good to know it's not me that can kill your Obi-Wan with two shots. I feel a little bit better there. It happens all the time, somehow. <laughs> <laughs> so, hopefully you had a good weekend. Um, I think you, did you, you guys played your Kyber team games this weekend too didn't you uh we did yes we uh we won our our uh matchup like our team because uh mark and matt won and i did not i got my ass handed to me it was great (laughs) well that's fun either which way so today we're gonna be doing some cool stuff um with some our list archetypes we're also going to be kind of doing some more pilot rankings um alex and i have a couple of different pilot rankings we want to do but to begin with though the first thing i gotta say is alex and i have matching backgrounds to some extent i didn't realize you had white bricks in your background as well as me it's a, it's a quality basement background you know I love it. I never noticed that. You've been on the show three times now, I think, and I've never noticed that. Do you like <laughs> my uh, Starry Night Beam Struggle Dragon Ball? Yes. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> that's that's about as good as the Green Jello poster. I used to have three of them lined up, Jeez. all of them signed, all from oh, different cool. concerts. <laughs> that's real cool, though. Yeah, they those guys are buddies fun. who love them. Yeah, we've seen them. I don't know. I've seen them probably like 10 times. Like, they just. They always play. They're always cheap and you can't get enough of the little pig song. I don't know. (laughs) Seems like a good thing. How was your weekend? Did you have a good weekend this week? Uh, Actually, my car broke down, so it was a little bit rough. I'm taking to the shop tomorrow. Hopefully just spark plugs. It could be the ignition coil. But other than that, and getting my ass handed to me a Kyber game, that hasn't been too bad. That's good. food. (laughs) <laughs> At least you didn't have your Kyber game stream to get your ass handed to you on stream, though. That happened to me. So you know, if it was streamed, he might have flown off his Vader off the board. Yeah. The <laughs> <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be LVO all over again. I wish. That's that's so that's what Corey. I think that's what Corey said the other day. He said he said that's the best way to fly a Defender Vader off the board. <laughs> Welcome, Twitchy. Thank you all again for joining us tonight. So why don't we start, let's start with the Kyber results just going into week four or going into week five from week four. We now are down to just five undefeated teams and one semi-undefeated team. And I say it's semi-undefeated because if you think about it, essentially the reason it can't be defeated or undefeated is because they have one draw from last round so never lost team yeah the never lost team technically yeah welcome michael (laughs) or morning yes morning Uh, you should be asleep (laughs) well we're happy you joined us live tonight so these are the standings essentially what will happen is out of these teams two out of these teams are guaranteed to make the playoffs um but the probability is uh that all but team six should make the playoffs based on some of the standing, the ranking. So there could be a couple other ones. I didn't do a big analysis because it's like, Hey, whatever we could do that at a later date time, Uh, probably next week. Once we know who's getting into the cut and who's not, Uh, we will also go over uh, more lists in detail because everybody's probably wanting to know how the lists work. I will kind of give like a little cautionary thing here. Like I'm the data guy. 
and I love data from this, but we have to be careful because we get to choose one of the matchups. So it's it's a little bit different than playing in a in a in a tournament where you're one on one with people. So yeah. um I will caution everyone not to be super overly, oh my god, this list one, we have to take it. But I will say that there is uh, some uniqueness to some of these lists, and I have had to play against some of them, and they do hit very, very hard. Daniel Leon's from our stream earlier today. That's definitely one of them. I had to play him in the Chicuffalo tournament this weekend. So I had to play two VCXs in our Chicuffalo tournament. <laughs> that was super fun. So, But either which way, I don't know, Alex, so where are you guys at Insanity? So we lost our round, so we're two and two. And I think we're ranked 50th right now. Uh, we are also two and two. I have no idea where we're ranked, but it's got to <laughs> not be not be up there. <laughs> I'm really hoping for the two, two and one really push that bench warmers. That's <laughs> why we got a Russ Cup. We were directly exactly in the middle of all seven teams. That's what I want to try to do again. Fair enough. Fair enough. I have learned that flying Aflax are dice dependent. And very hard to do sometimes. So aces and separatists just don't exist very well <laughs> at all. Like Grievous is really the closest thing you get to an ace, and he's definitely not an ace. So, But he hits so hard. He does. He does hit hard. So, All right. So if you are were sleeping this weekend and did not play in the Chicago Mystery Box Tournament, essentially the idea was is we all got custom damage decks and this is a tournament it was not a team it was just a four four round tournament with a top cut of four and essentially what they did is they said okay here you go we what we're gonna do is we're gonna give you where if you take a damage all damage after shields are gone you flip it up so everything is basically a crit now for crit effects such as like um uh su such as dropping a crate you had to actually get a crit on your dice for it um i just only picked up one crate and didn't have to worry about it that one round so like i didn't care um <laughs> but the idea would be is is there they what greg and uh, nick did is they took that damage deck and they inflated it they took out all direct hits so there was zero direct hits even though for two rounds i kept thinking direct hit direct hit in my head direct hit and i was like shit they took all the direct hits out um and then what would happen is you would flip it over, and if it was a blank crit, it just got flipped back over and it was just a damage card. If it was a dotted crit, which there was 12 of them, you discarded that card so you didn't take the damage, and you got an upgrade at random. It, it, and, like, it was somewhat beneficial, and it was really beneficial for uh, high health ships, I guess. Um Yeah. <laughs> It would make a lot of sense if you brought really high hull kind of ships in there. Yes, because I made that mistake of saying, nah, I'm just going to run whatever JJ built me. So he, I know he's not here tonight, but he's. I was like, hey, I don't want to fly Separatists. This is a for fun tournament. Um, tell me what I could bring. And so I ran Resistance. <laughs> I ran Resistance. Um, and we haven't gotten to it. Be patient, Pim. We haven't gotten to it yet. Um, but we... we, we <laughs> We essentially took the, um, I took a resistance list with Finn and Neonum, and then I had um, Kaz in the Fireball, and I had, who else did I have? Kaz in the Fireball. Finn, Lulo, Tally. Yes. Nine and, up. Yes. Yep. Ugh. Well, you brought the wrong Tally. That's half your problem right there. Proton Torpedoes. I, I know. I'll agree with you, actually, that that was definitely a mistake. Um, I used to be on the tally is only for proton torp torpedoes, but um, definitely not. Definitely not this time. Like I am definitely anti. I think Lulo is well, it, is definitely the smarter pull if you're bringing only one. Um, and it would be a million times better to bring something else on tally. <laughs> so uh, I'm telling you, tally with optics, uh, ion torps, and three points of whatever EPTs you want. Probably yeah. heroic marksmanship, but you know, definitely heroic. I will tell you, heroic worked like I don't know, like a hundred times for me. <laughs> it was horrible. <laughs> like Finn would blink out with two dice half the time. Kaz, Kaz would blink out and heroic. I think the game I played against uh, Will, 
the third round. So there's two crazy things. The first crazy thing is that Kaz blanked out, was outmaneuvered by Anakin, and so was supposed to get three dice and only got two, and it saved him every time because I literally, I think, blanked <laughs> out almost every time and got to re-roll those damn dice. Almost every time. But the second thing that saved him was all the fucking upgrades. Like, Kaz took over 10 damage and did not die to the last round. It took Anakin to the last round to kill Kaz. And one of the upgrades I got from Anakin was fucking Prockets. And I had <laughs> I had Jag, I think it, yeah, it was Jag, Jag or Wolf lined up in a bullseye, and I already had a focus. And I hadn't shot yet. So I got to shoot Prockets and kill, and kill one of his ships. He, he, it did not go well for him. That's awesome. All right. So, in this fun tournament, it was put on by Nickel City and 312 Squadron. So, if you don't know who they are, uh, there will be a link in our description. You can click on it to go to this Roll Better page, and they have, obviously, their Discords, their Twitch channels. Um, you can sign up for prizes, which you won't get any, because you didn't play. Um, so, there was 14 of us that played. Pim was the only person that was undefeated in, in the rounds, and then Pim went on to win... The tournament in the top. I definitely was not beer can drunk. I don't. I actually did not drink for this tournament. It was in the morning, and I didn't. I don't. I don't think I actually had a glass of scotch until probably eleven o'clock last night. But the nice thing was, is you got to run a couple of like stuff you would not normally win. We are going to go over lists a little bit. I don't know if Pim's list is going to be any good outside of this tournament, but I'll tell you the game that I did get to watch with him. The upgrades, just in fairness, did like it wasn't like positive for him, like in a big enough swing, to um, tell me that his list is only good in this tournament. I will say that running Mornaki and Darth Vader, um, the 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 top game, uh, the top cut for four game that Greg was streaming, they were literally zero and zero into like round six almost. No one picked up a crate. <laughs> all they were doing is shooting at each other and they couldn't kill each other. Um, uh, so yeah, so, but the, the way, the way it worked, like I said, is kind of, you basically, we got all paired up. We played one scenario per round and then we got to play, you know, we got to be part of the, the whole tournament for forever. Um, so let's talk a little bit about lists or I guess we go back, we can go back to the top, cut it real quick and then go from there. So the last, the final was between system error and Yellow Jacket Pim, which is um, Andrew from Andrew Pim. And if you don't know who he is, he does do painting of miniatures. Uh, you're welcome to get painted miniatures from him. He's actually really, really good. And he's a very affordable pricing. Um, so he won the whole thing. Hands down, uh, deserved the respect for it. And his list just hit like crazy. Um so let's go into some of the lists. So let's find Pims. I don't, this is the one thing, other complaint I have is I wish they would sort these um, by order instead of name. Oh, I pulled it up. If you want me to go. Yeah, sure. If you want to go ahead and, and read it off, that'd be awesome. Okay. He's got Nora in the Y Wing, which you don't typically see, but I'm sure it'd be really good for something like this because she's a lot of high hull uh, auto evades at range one kind of thing. Uh, Nora has Ion Cannon Turret, Ion Torps, R5-D8, and Seismic Charges. He has the Battle of Yavin Garvin. He has Saw Guerrera with Notorious Chewbacca Tactical Officer Contraband Ablative. And then the, the Config. Um, Azra with K2SO. And Keo with Elusive and Concussion Missiles. Yep. Which actually, I really like this this Keo. I, 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 I know you're leaving a point in the loadout points on the table, but I just, I don't know. I really like the concussion missile choice um, for Keo over some of the other stuff. Like, I think we've seen some, you know, like we've seen some cluster missiles on them. We've seen people what? taking mag pulse and different things. I just really like the concussion missiles, I think, though. Oh, concussion missiles are definitely a way to go. And also, I wonder if. No. I'm trying to figure out if Elusive will work with a increased difficulty side slip. I think but it I does. I don't think it's it, it's not technically a red maneuver. Well, it is a red maneuver. Hmm. Yeah, because yeah, it, cause it works on like damaged engine, right? So it is. Yeah. So you can do that. That's awesome. Yes. So that's that's actually I 
I 100% am down for that because you, you're getting a soft mod, right? You know, it's, it's not a real mod. It's a reroll of a dice, but it's still, it's like a, a soft, soft mod. So even after you side slip, you get your force back. You can do it with an elusive. I, I, it seems really good to me. That's cool. Um, yeah, so Pim was the top list. Very fun list to fly. Um, again, I don't know. Like <laughs> Every time I see Garvin, I usually see them die. So i um, happy that his Garvin doesn't doesn't die all the time, you know, and did very well in this tournament. And so it was, it was interesting to see this list on the, sh on, on the thing here. So if you want, you can go over the next list system, I think system error. System error. Yep. No problem. That has a uh, battle of Yavin Vader. Uh, Vassari in the Defender with uh, Juke, Fire Control System, and Jammy Beam. Uh, and Morna Key in the Decimator with Seven Sister, Minister Tua, Agile Gunner, Thermal Detonators, Late Fuses, and the Dauntless title. Yeah, this was an interesting uh, build with, with Colonel Vassari here, right? Like, yeah. it's, it's an interesting choice. Um, the free target locks, though, do help, but you don't get, you know, you don't have that because it doesn't have the points. You don't get the uh, uh, HLC like you usually see um i will say this was they the they the final was a rematch actually i believe pim had to play system error in either round three or four yeah, yeah um, it looks like it was in system in uh round four yeah so it was kind of funny because it was a rematch and it was a lot closer of a game uh it came down towards to the end of the game more than what the their original matchup was so <laughs> um yeah so that was a cool that was kind of a cool list um who else was in the top so the other top Epinotic or daniel leone was in the top and this is very similar to his uh, kyber cup list that he's played and i think is undefeated with uh, um so he has chopper in the vcx with fire control dorsal saw vtg and ghost title kraken with plasmas elusive luke in the x-wing with trick shot Proton Torpedoes, R4, Spare Parts Canister, and S-Foils. Um, and then Fen in the Sheathapede with Swarm Tactics, R4, Targeting Computer, and the Phantom title. Now, when we were playing, I was a little concerned. I was like, why are you putting Fen and Chopper close together? Now, I don't know if he should have told me or not. We were both uh, two and one. And he's like, well, if you shoot at Finn too much, I'm just going to dock him into Chopper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you don't shoot at Finn, he's going to do Finn things. I did not shoot at Finn um, at all. And uh, so, yeah. So I shot at at Chopper, and I was able to take Chopper off the board um, due to a little bit of lucky stuff. But again, these high health um, these high health lists, right? Like, it made it really, really hard when Chopper would go, oh, you think he's going to die? Nope. Just kidding. Just kidding, guys. Not going to die. Now he's back with stronger upgrades. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like the child. I don't know. You know, like Ooh. there's that. That sounds terrifying, honestly. Yeah. And I will say I made, so I actually probably would have been a little bit closer to winning that. I made a mistake with my Neonub and got Neonub too close for the first engagement and was bright, barraged with, um, basically down to one health. Uh, I couldn't roll anything and got down to one health with Nina. And that game, I drew zero upgrades for every one of the damage cards. Zero upgrades. So I went through um, over 15 or 20 damage, and there was no no upgrades. Whereas every other game, I happened to get upgrades. You know, this game, nope. And Daniel's <laughs> like, oh, man, you, there's, you still don't have any upgrades? Like, nope. Nope. Would have been nice if I had the child right now or anything, <laughs> you know? Like, um. And I made the mistake. I made. I made it. The, that was kind of the first mistake. Um, was that? And then Chopper lived for quite a while. Um, but and, and here's here's the best part. Normally, when you would see a ship that's got structure or uh, the um the loose stabilizer on it, you would just kind of go, eh, whatever. You know, it's gonna die. I'm not gonna shoot you this turn if I'm not getting shot. But you don't get. It's not guaranteed because if they draw an upgrade, that stupid ship still lives for another round, and you don't get the point. <laughs> So I had to take like a shot into Chopper that I knew I didn't need versus into Finn. And then I got he I got my um Lulo who was on one health. I should have five straighted and rotated and shot Kraken and I didn't. 
and then Fen was able to do three damage into Lulu. Um, and then at that point, it was like that. It was it was over at that point. There was no coming back from that. So, how come no one took like separate uh, CIS dirge? That seems like that would have been really silly. Well, because the direct hits are gone, right? So you don't get direct hits. So that's one of them. It's only the pilot crits, and your deck is inflated with blank crits. Mm, okay. That's why I didn't take them. Greg said the same thing. Greg actually, I was talking with Greg a little bit about it. He's like, hey, you could take Dirge. You know, I, I think Dirge would be really good. And I, I think there's a probability Dirge could have been good. Um, But I think people just thought CIS, why would we run any of this stuff? I was going to run two gauntlets and three droids, but I don't that's know. Funny. I, I let JJ pick my list, so... That's what I did. And I think, what was the last list? So I got to go back. And it was uh, Nightwing. Nightwing. That's Lando, right. Ahsoka, and Callus. Yes, and that list is actually really good in this format. What was that? Well, I find it once you read off. Uh, Lando, must, well, he must listen to the podcast, right? Because it's Lando, Perceptive, <laughs> Co-Pilot, and Biston. Uh, Ahsoka and the A-Wing with concussion missiles. The Vectored Cannons config, which is interesting. Juke and Predictive Shot. And then Callus with Saw Gerrera, Dorsal, Veteran Turret Gunner, and the Ghost title. That does nothing. Yes, it's just a meme thing. <laughs> so this list, I this is my first loss, uh, the second game. This list hits and then doesn't die. His Callus took so many upgrades, too. Gone like, <laughs> his Callus just lived forever. Like, between the fact that if you mod your dice and you reroll, and I just, I couldn't. I couldn't kill Callus till the end of the game, and it was all came down to between him and me. And I had to, sh- I had to get like one damage into Hera with two shots, one damage into Hera, and I couldn't push the one damage for through into Hera. Um, and because I couldn't do that, I ended up losing. If I pushed the damage into Hera, I think I would have won by one point. So, yeah, that's a lot of actions between like Lando giving about Ahsoka giving about, and then just Callus having Saw Guerrero, so you don't need like a focus token. Right? Yeah. You just reinforce target lock and something else, whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, kind of crazy. He, he had forgotten the title, and I told him, I was like, whatever, you can use the title if you want. Because by the time he remembered that he needed the title, it was like, like Lando was at the bottom of the board, and I was like, whatever, I don't care. You can take an evade if you want. I really don't care at this point. I've done no damage into Lando, so, you know, or like yeah. minimal damage into Lando. I can't get points into him, so if you want to take the evader, he's like, no, I'll just take the focuses. Like, okay. <laughs> well, fair enough, I guess. Um, but I, we talked a little bit about this list. This, I think this list has some value outside of, I'm not super sold on the juke on Ahsoka, but that's just me. Um, like the juke did work a little bit, but not a lot. Like it was, the juke was not super impactful in our game, but um, this is similar to what uh, Matt at our locals runs. Um, except for he runs Han instead of Lando. Um, and he doesn't do the double tapping with Bistan. So I don't know why. But other than that, that's that's really the only difference. I only I do kind of wonder if if Lando might be a little bit better in this this three ship list um, because of the action handing out. Because Lando is always double modded then. Yeah. Yeah, so. I like Lando a lot, honestly. I mean, you take the title on him, but, you know, <laughs> That uh, just the ability to like double focus or and then boost if you're just being selfish and keeping the actions to himself really good for arc dodging and then shooting twice or like a lock so you can mod the first attack, have that double modded and save the focus for a second shot. Also having something else to take actions like Callus or to give Ahsoka a target lock so she can just focus or evade because she has Juke in this case. Right, so target lock. You know, have three fours and juke. It's kind of a nasty hit coming from her. Yeah. Like I said, I, I do like this list, and it was kind of one of those things where we go, oh, hey, maybe maybe this does have some little little bit of legs. I will say it's probably very action economy starved um, because you can't hand out the Lando action, I don't believe, to take a scenario action. No. Um, But you could take your double focus and then take your regular action to take a scenario action. So, um. I don't know. I I do like we we did cover Lando last week, so I did, I forgot to ask him. I did I did not ask him at all. I should have been like, hey, do you listen to our show? Because uh, uh, <laughs> the possibility is that we we came up with the exact same build with Dino. <laughs> so. 
I don't think it's like a, a crazy out there build, but you know, every time I see something like that, I have to point out, it's like, hey, you know, maybe they listen to the podcast. Who knows? Yeah, no big deal. So that's your cuffalo. Uh, thank you again to Greg and Nick from 312 Squadron and uh, Nickel City X Wing for putting it on for us. I will say the prizing for a free tournament where it's amazing, um, period, hands down. And Pim was a great sport because Pim painted the ships and then won. So I think Pim's giving one of the ships to one of the other players. I'm not sure how that works. Um, I wasn't 100% tuned in at that time. I just know that it was there. Um, I, we After our games were done, the kids were very upset I was in the basement all day. So they wanted <laughs> to start watching Wednesday because my daughters have not seen that show yet. So they wanted to get through it this weekend so that they could watch it with their brother. So we bought pizza and then sat that New York style pizza, by the way, because uh, deep dish pizza is disgusting. You know, um, we have our own style of pizza, you know, I don't, I don't like it. I just I, don't, I like New York. I like that thin, that thinner, like a little bit of extra cheese, some grease, minimal sauce. Give me give me give me that. That's what I like. Um, But we had we had we had pizza. We actually bought pizza for the kids and then. We watched, sat around and watched Wednesday. So I had it, it, uh, the the finals up on my phone, but I I couldn't hear anything. I I won something, and then and all I know is my name shows up in the chat. And I was like, oh, I won something. I don't even. I have to go back later. So I had to wait till the kids went to bed, and then I went to go back and watch whatever I won, so I could submit the form for it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it was a fun. It was it was a fun tournament. I will say, um, maybe looking at ways to tweak some of the um larger ships getting some of the uh, negating their their lifespan would make it uh, a little bit more fun um but overall like for something that's free something that's meant to be community building something that you can actually take to your locals and this is something you could take to your locals and this is fun um and so if people want we we actually talked um i talked a little bit with uh, another friend of mine about maybe making up some of the damage checks because i think we could make them pretty cheap um, with all the logos and everything on there. So I don't know. It might be a fun thing if we could tweak the tournament settings a little bit and maybe put a kit together. Um, if people are interested to know more, uh, hit me up on Discord or um, on Facebook. But um, I, I, do, I do feel that this could be something that you could take into your locals. It would be a very fun thing to do, and it could be a relatively cheap option to give you alternative ways to play X-Wing that isn't a bunch of people just being ultra-competitive. So... And you get to put cool ships on the table you don't normally take. So thank God it was not extended. Can you imagine <laughs> if it was extended? Ugh. It'd be so. awesome. You would land the, bring a Lambda? That'd be great. <laughs> no, Red Line, that's what you want. Mm -hmm. You want a, a Punisher. That'd be great. Yep. We might that. get Punishers back. So here's the hoping. But days. if you do want, the, the info is up in Greg's Discord. If you do want any of the actual tournament information to play in your locals, uh, let us know. And we can kind of help you out with it as long as you just make sure you shout out um, Greg and Nick's stream. That's they, they're the ones that did design this, and I guess I'm giving it away. He, they aired it, so. Um, but I, I do think that this is something that you can play, and it was a lot of fun to play. There was zero pressure stakes, and like I said, the two of them did a very good job uh, streaming a lot of the games and then giving us cool shit to uh, take home. All right, so let's move on to our next segment. We had a listener submit a list to us. So we're going to go ahead and bring that list up. And we only had one tonight, so we're just going to do the one. And uh, let me fix my screen here, and we will talk about changing it up. So Chris, uh, let the Wookiee win, was the one who submitted this. He says, I'd love to hear about Cassie and Andor outside of U wings. I found he actually synergizes very well with an alpha strike. I flew him in a tournament the other day and he was a lot of fun. Essentially, instead of running four U's or using Bentic or Saw, what if you used Cassian? So, Alex, what is Cassian's ability? Cassian is at the start of activation phase. You may choose one friendly ship at range one to three. If you do, that ship removes one stress token. Yeah, it seems pretty good because it's at the start of activation, right? Yep. It's all ranges but zero. <laughs> so right. um, that's a pretty big, that's like a Hondo band almost, you know? Yeah, I mean, the 
whole not being able to use it on yourself is the only drawback. Yes. Or I guess if you hit your own ship, but you shouldn't do that. <laughs> you shouldn't, but you've never <laughs> flown against me, have you? I hit my own ship. I, mean, I do it all the time, yeah. but... <laughs> um, so it's actually a really cool ability. Um, Cassian only has 12 loadout. Uh, so Alex, what was the list that Chris submitted to us? Okay, so he had a list that's two X-Wings, an A-Wing, and Cassian. Cassian had Trick Shot, Fire Control, and K2SO. K2SO works pretty well with his ability because it can just give anyone that stress calculate and then just pull the stress off at the start of activation. Uh, he had Tycho with Composure, Trick Shot, HLC, and Concussion Missiles. Uh, he had Luke with Extreme Maneuvers, Elusive, Proton Torpedoes, Chopper, and Munitions Failsafe, which I believe is what Ryan Farmer ran at LVO. And uh, Wes Jansen with Elusive, Proton Torpedoes, and Munitions Failsafe. And I love Wes Jansen. I don't know why people aren't flying him more. He's really good. <laughs> I like him too, but everybody focuses directly on him for it. So Whatever. It's fine. So when, <laughs> so when we look at the original list, right, obviously Wes is there to, to include the jam, right? So it's a, it's a big thing to say, hey, Wes is here. Um, we got all I-5s minus Cassian. Cassie can still fly the side. Cassie still has a red coordinate. Um, Cassian, you know, I'm a little weirded out by the trick shot, but maybe that's just because Cassian really doesn't have a lot of points. So, like, what do you, what do, you do with it? He's got a weird points value, 12. Yeah, um, the, the tragic part is that Cassian, I believe, is the only U-Wing that just doesn't have two crew slots. And in Rebels, that's kind of rough to do. Yeah. Because, like, normally you would see, you know, like, Le Le Leia, or you could see, I don't know, Ben Rao. You could see almost anything. Yeah. You know, on, um, so, so Cassian is a little bit, that's probably why a lot of people do not run Cassian. But I think if we want to lean into, so the idea is, is how do we take the stress off, right? So let's take some of that stress off, um, and because that's kind of what Cassian's meant for. So, Alex, here is your list that you submitted. Tell us a little bit about your list. Oh, yeah, so um, I wanted to really kind of exploit Cassian's ability with this list. Um, so I gave him shield upgrade because now that's a 9 health U-Wing, and that's a pain, and you raise his half damage threshold up. It's real rough. Uh, and then selfless, because you have an extra shield, and novice technician, in case you want a selfless and don't have any shields left. Uh, then I did uh, Wes Jansen with Crack Shot and Proton Torpedoes. Uh, Jack Porkins from the Battle of Yavin. Uh, Keo with uh, Crack Shot and Concussion Missiles, although now I might change it to Elusive. And uh, Kraken with Elusive Fire Control Ion Torpedoes and Munitions Failsafe. The theory behind this is that, you know, you can, uh, Keo, you can still do like the side slips even if you're stressed. Like you can you can link actions and pull off the stress after that. So, um, and when I play Keo, it's real stress. It's, it's annoying when you want to do like the focus boost, but then next turn you're you don't clear off the stress when you do the side slip. And Kraken's in there because after he shoots, you have another friendly ship at range one who can do an extra action draining it as red, which would be West Jansen probably to get that double modded proton torpedoes. And then you can just pull that stress off and have them. It's like they just got two free actions kind of thing. And then uh, Jack Porkins is just a solid four point X wing, honestly, especially if you have coordinate from Cassian. <laughs> That's true. So. so cool. makes sense. Um, I do like the selfless. I was actually looking at, at selfless uh, a little bit more lately. Um, so there's that. So JJ decided he was going to submit a take two. Um, so this is uh, JJ's take, which I'm not I'm not going to tell you I'm sold on 10 nub in it, but this is JJ's take. This is how JJ would build it if he was running the list. He has 10 nub with hopeful FCS, ion cannon, blazer bomb, and S foils. Uh, Braylon Strom with hopeful ion cannon, thermals, and S foils. And Cassian with Predator, Leia Organa, Fire Control, Pivot Wing, and then Garvin in an arc. So this is like uh, this arc is Garvin. even weirder because I've never seen Arc Garvin uh, put on the table, um, at all. 
So anyway, there's there's Garvin. Oh, um, I used to love our Garvin in 2.0. He was actually pretty pretty fun in the list with uh like a dodge and all that kind of stuff. It was it was pretty cool to pass that focus around. Uh and then yeah, Garvin has Predator, Tractor Beam, and Blaze. And he, he says his idea is is that Cassian offers the versatility to open the B wings up because sometimes you can't shed your strength your stress because things just don't work out for you <laughs> though i've not seen many b-wings live long enough to not shed the stress on almost every turn but that does it does happen um and essentially his, the idea is is it works very well with braylon who as he uses the stress to mod shots adding and garvin gives potential to pass the focus tokens for it to give further mods so they don't have to remove stress not sold two b-wings are good though just not sold on that, sorry. If you remember Stanizuski's Rebel Shotgun list back in 2.0, he made extensive use of uh, Braylon with Cassian because that was just a really strong combination of just hard-hitting B-Wings. But now that he's five points and Cassian's also five points, man, that's half your list. And those things, B-Wings, if they're under concentrated fire, they will pop regardless of how many rerolls you have. Yeah, they do. They just they don't like to live. So. All right, so my take's a little bit different. Um, so my take, I guess I know my take's is 28 points, so there's a couple in interchangeable pieces. So the idea is to kind of maximize Cassian's, um, essentially Cassian's ability to shed the stress, right? So I put Enduring. Um, I'm not sold that Enduring and Tactical Scrambler are the best. Um, you don't have enough points to take the Shield Upgrade and Hondo, but the idea with Hondo is you're able to coordinate and jam ships with it, um, Hondo is really good. I like Enduring. Um, if you have the extra points, you could go back to Trick Shot if you wanted. Um, you could go Trick Shot and the the Sensor upgrade. But in, again, if we're going to be honest, like typically Cassian is here to shed stress to provide the coordinate, which now is no longer red, um, because of that, and uh, allows you to kind of be there to be in the center of it to say, hey, why don't you shoot me instead? Um. Then I have Keel with Concussion and Elusive, because I thought that was a genius maneuver. Um, Tycho, <laughs> I have the Concussion, Trick Shot, HLC, and Composure, which I believe that's, that's how he had them. So I don't think I yeah. changed. Um, yeah, so I don't the, think I changed him. So I left that kind of the same just to try to make sure that, you know, you had some aspect of the list that was the same. Um, and again, you could change out that Trick Shot for something else if you wanted. You know, you, you could go back to elusive you could do a lot of different things you could go to ion cannon if you wanted um and elusive I, I think there's a lot of things so now here's where we get into the variability though right because so that's essentially seven and five so that's 12 points of your list you have eight points left so to me instead of running two fours we would run a five and a three um i had considered kraken i do think kraken is very could be very strong i'm not anti putting kraken in there but i thought well i want to get the k2so in there Right, like I want to put K2SO and I want Hondo because K2SO can handle the stress. If nobody else has stress, Hondo can then just say, or uh, Cassie can say, "Boom, you don't have stress anymore." And because of how it works in the you know start of it, it shouldn't really matter, right? Because you get to choose your order of operation. Um, so that was the, the theory: is you put Ezra in there because it's a force tie fighter, it's an objective getter, and it gives K2SO up. Um. You could sub in and put Derek Clevian in, right? Because what is Derek's basically says if after you acquire a lock, you can shed a stress. So if you can't, so let's say Derek is does like a boost focus, right? Or a barrel roll boost has that stress. You um, you you would be able to clear that stress with Cassian before you do any of your coordinate actions. Um, right. Or if he isn't stressed and you coordinated him and did the, um, something else, you, you could be able to use it in a, in a specific way. Right. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sold <laughs> that Derek is really the, the best option. I feel Ezra's better. Um, but then you can either put Wes Jansen in kind of, and I had the same to, to be honest, I have almost the same build for Wes Jansen, the elusive mission fail safe and proton torpedoes. Cause I feel that's the best one, but Cornhorn also fits in here. And you get an R3 Astromech. 
So now with Cornhorn, you're taking the double locks. You're able to pass off Tycho's and uh, Keo's lock. You're able to pass off a Cassian lock. You can pass off a lot of different locks um, when you start activating. So you, you'll be able to activate and do that, and you have all these locks that you can start giving away, and it kind of negates, you know, like giving uh, some of those ships double mods. So then you don't have to feel Tycho has to take the the boost the failure action and take a, a stress target lock focus, but you can see that, and it gives Keo that ability to shoot a concussion missile if Keo wants to. Um, helps with focus fire. Uh, so that was kind of my take. I'm leaning higher, leaning towards cor Cornhorn, but that's just me. Um, I do think Wes Jansen is a solid piece in there uh, because it can force a jam um, that you need, and because everything, you know, besides two of the ships, you know, it, it can allow that that Wes Jansen to fire first, make them spend their mod or get jammed, um, and I think that that can be also highly beneficial. Have you ever been shot at as Wes Jansen by a reinforced ship? Because you end up just not taking that shot because you're going to lose your reinforce. Do you know how unfun that is? Yeah. If you're a decimator and you're trying to shoot at someone, <laughs> do you know how much your... of a menace Wes Jansen can be? He's so great. Yeah. And he can also shoot at you and get rid of your, your thing too. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I agree. I think Wes Jansen is a good way to go as well. So. In that list, I would do Corn Horn because you just are relying on a Cassian coordinate. But if if you're not relying on that, I don't know. I, I do really like West Jansen. Yeah. All right. So let's move to our next segment, our roll call series for ranking pilots based on scenario. So today, JJ wanted to so bad, and see, I even put JJ's picture in here for him so that he could feel included tonight. Um, JJ really wanted to be able to rank some of the pilots along with us. Um, we did this series a little while ago where what our goal was is to pick ships and rank them by scenario, F through S, and basically kind of give a tier ranking to say, hey, here we are. Um, these are the ships that we want to rank and to make them good you know or see how good they are comparatively and it's so i guess i'm going to take a quick side tangent because I'm, I'm a tangenting person that's what i do um but i'm going to take a quick side tangent because i've been trying to work through how do we get statistics in x-wing how do we get all these websites and these sites um to work very well to give us the data that we need so somebody last week i mentioned um that pattern analyzer and somebody sent me the contact name of who it was so I contacted them and then I didn't have the ability to get back to them all week because I was, I've been on call all week. So like this week is just like this week is hell. Like I'm actually, I probably should have just pushed the podcast till tomorrow in case I get a call tonight, but we'll deal with that if they call me. Um, I hate being on call so much sometimes. Anyway, this is the worst. So I've had a, a jam packed week of, of all of that stuff. So I finally got back to them and what I wanted to do was get like kind of lay out a plan of this is what I've been working on. And this is kind of my high level idea of how I would analyze um, statistics. So this series where we rank pilots based on a scenario is again, a little bit more subjective. We did have some criteria that we went over. If you missed it, we went over that two episodes ago, two episodes ago, right? three, yeah. three, three. God, it's been so long. <laughs> uh, three episodes ago, we went over uh, actual criteria for it where we talked about, you know, kind of how we would rank it, what it includes and stuff like that. I'm not going to read that this time. If you want, you can go back and check that out. I also have a companion document that has all of that information in it as well. But essentially, we're going to rank them F through S. F essentially is do not play this pilot ever in your whole life. Um, D is play it casually. C, you know, again, is kind of like, hey, we're going to play this pilot. It could possibly be really good. Probably not, but could be. B means it's, it's definitely got some wins, can do some scenarios. A means it can do a lot of stuff. <laughs> and then S means uh, it's basically like God tier. Um, so we're going to get to see his Finn God tier tonight. So tonight I picked Finn and second sister. Alex picked the Mandalorian and Sicko. And JJ picked... 
Nora Wexley and Muse, who I'm sure we're going to disagree with him. I know I'm going to disagree <laughs> with him on his Nora ranking, but we will see. We will see. We will see. We will see. So, Alex, um, so I don't know. Do we want to go over the pilot ability for each of them? I can't remember if we did that last time or not. I think we did, but we can, we can do it. I mean, they're pretty quick. All right. So I'll begin with Second Sister. Essentially, her ability, she's an I-4. She has 15 loadout. She's worth five points. And it says, while you perform an attack, after the neutralized step, if the attack hits, you may spend two force. If you do, change all of your hits to crit results. All of them. Not just one, not just two, but every single one of them. Um, and then I also picked Finn, which is my least favorite ship right now <laughs> that I did fly this weekend. Um, when you defend or perform an attack, you may add one blank result, or you may gain one strain and add a focus result instead. And when Finn has one green dice and he rolls a blank, he adds the other blank and heroics to stupid things. So, there you go. What pilots did you pick, and what was their 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 things? I chose the Mandalorian, who is seven points. 20 loadout in the razor quest um while you perform or oh, sorry if you while you defend or perform an attack if you're in the front arc at range one or two of two or more enemy ships you may change one of your blank results to a focus result it goes very well with typically you put the child on them that's taking a blank and turning it into an evade if you spend the force and sicko who is by far my favorite lat now uh, after you execute a basic maneuver, you may assign the sickening maneuver condition to yourself. And what that does is lets you execute red maneuvers even while stressed. After you reveal a bank or a turn maneuver, you must gain one strain and execute the maneuver as a side slip. If you reveal a straight maneuver, you execute that maneuver as a K-turn. Um, and after you ex execute the maneuver, you remove the condition. Which is the best, like, I... I agree. Okay. I have been talking Sicko up for a long time, and for his points value, I think he's a really good, good ship. But we'll get into that in a minute. I don't want to waste uh, too much time. Why don't you tell us JJ's picks, and we can go from there. Yes, he brought Nora in the Y-Wing, but you know, same ability as her in the Ark. Uh, while you defend, if there's an enemy ship at range 0 to 1, add one evade result to your dice. Like, not change a die to an evade, just Straight up, add a green die that says you evaded. Yeah, it's like K2B4 for in, in, in Separatist. That's what it's like. Yeah, a stupid yeah. attack droid. You spend a calculate, they take a strain, or you get to add a green dice. People hate that droid. It's so good. And then Muse in the FO. Uh, at the start of the engagement phase, you may choose a friendly ship at zero to one. If you do, that ship removes one stress token. All right. So let's get into the pilot rankings doc here. Here it comes. Come on. It's loading up. It's taking a little while, folks. <laughs> All right. So what we're going to do is let's, I don't know, which one do you want to rank first? So Alex, we do not have to do them in the same order that we did them in before. We could pick whatever order we would like to rank them in. Um, I mean, we can start with Finn. That's that's pretty non-controversial takes right off the start. We can escalate from there. All right. <laughs> so let's start with Finn. And I will I will give you first bet while I set this up. Okay, well. And remember, just, just quick, just remember, we are going to go ranking based on the scenario. Yeah, basically how well they play that objective or if you would take them for that objective, how you know strong they would be in that. So um, for Assault, uh, I, I'd probably give them... Uh, it's between a B and an A. I'm going to give him a B. He's a small ship, and his maneuvering is not particularly good. Uh, but he is very good around other ships. Like, he, he survives really well, and he can hit you really well if you're not really expecting it. So I'd give him a B for Assault. Uh, for Scramble, 
Yeah, he's, he's not particularly good at scrambling. So action dependent on that focus, I'd probably give him a D. Uh, I mean, he still hits, but he doesn't... He's not fast enough to go take out other satellites that you need. And if you do, you're wasting your action. Well, not wasting it, but you're, you're ruining the whole point of bringing Finn. Uh, for salvage, um, you know, I'd probably give him a B. He's very tanky. He doesn't reposition typically, so you can grab him, take the crate on him. It's just after you start taking a lot of shots, and you will because you are slow, the the strains, he starts rolling. He's only got four health. <laughs> so if you have a lot of spike damage or something like that, he's kind of toast. <music> we put him at S tier, honestly. Because uh, you half health him, he's, you give him one point, you kill him, you, you get three. And he hits really hard, and he's very defensible. Like, what do you? Do? It, it's such a pain to pay the tax of putting all the resources into killing Finn. So I'd, I'd give him an S in assault or in a right. chance. And what did you give him for salvage? Uh, B. Thank you. Sorry, I had computer pooped out. That's okay. All right. So. My my take is is going to be pretty similar. I will actually say I I actually will give Finn an A in assault. Now I'm going to caveat this. Currently, Finn has what twelve loadout points, yeah. and is only three cost of three. So if Finn went up to four points, all of our 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 things change, right? Everything changes. He is no longer considered. In the same boat, yeah, in my opinion. But being able to take perspective co pilot <laughs> and elusive, just those two right there are so so good. Um, I mean, and that's not everything, that's just like, here you go, Merry Christmas. <laughs> um, have whatever you want, and then you could kind of put in there whatever else you want as a flavor. Um, I don't know. So, all of this stuff is is set specifically. To that, in chance, I will give him an S, and I will say that not because he doesn't die, but because you have to literally spend three ships shots killing him, no matter what. No questions asked. It's going to take three ships to shoot one round <laughs> into him to try to kill him. Um, I actually will give him an A in salvage because I feel that. If you position your salvage crate towards the back, Finn picks it up. Finn will just one bank around and take the double focuses. And then he's it's the same thing as like chance. If you want to invest your time into him, you're more than welcome to. Finn's almost always having two green dice, um, unless you're taking the strains all the time to live. Uh so again, three or four shots, you're you're gonna you're not gonna have the ability to. Um, do it. I will also agree with you. I give him a D in scramble, um, which I feel I don't think I should, but I, I, I don't know. I feel he just, it, I, because you only have two scramble objectives or three, I guess, right? The center one, you know, most people are not going to let, you're going to have to get your fin into the mix to do that. And at that point, you're probably taking focuses. You're, you're not going to take, you're, you're just not going to, you're not going to take that action unless no one's shooting at you. Um, and I don't feel, I'll be honest for Finn's ability. I do not feel he is super worth the take that action. And somebody one shot him off the board. I don't feel the trade is, is there's not a value there. Um, he's not a two point droid, you know, and he's a knight too. So like you have a really good chance of someone just taking it after you. Yes. Um, yep. And there's that, that's even, uh, it, that makes even more sense. So, so we're gonna give we're gonna give JJ's JJ's takes, I guess, as well. JJ gave him an A, an assault, um, because he can basically solo and do anything uh, he wants. Um, in chance, he gave him an A, uh, because he said basically you have access to the evade the all the points that we said in salvage 
he actually gave him a B in salvage uh, for the fact that he can grab the crate, use his tokens to keep him safe. Uh, again, similar to what I was saying, he is easy to hunt down, JJ says, but it's going to take you a while to catch him. And then for scramble, he gave him an A in scramble. Um, and I his reasoning behind it was scramble. access to the force. Oh, no, that's the wrong one. Yeah. Okay, that's the wrong one. He gave him a D in scramble as well. Never mind. He gave him a D in scramble for the basically the same reasons we did. So that brings him out to a B minus, a B and an A minus uh, for me. So pretty average. I do feel that the average rank at A minus is better uh, for him because he does hit that A tier for that points level, in my opinion. But I guess this might give Corey some fire to say, hey, Chrissy, that's why we shouldn't get rid of Finn. So, I mean, like, the only thing he's bad at is salvage. Everything else, he's incredibly good. It's just being slow is not conducive to... Or, the only thing he's bad at is scramble, sorry. Everything else is just... You know, he's, he's just... He lives, and he's so cheap at three points that you, you should put him in basically every resistance list in some form. Yeah. All right. So let's move on to the Mandalorian. The Mandalorian is next. And this one, JJ didn't give us any rankings for. So it's just you and me. So Alex, tell us about the Mandalorian. Okay. So I'm going to go in with the caveat of that. He has some sort of thing to maximize his ability. Typically it's like the child. I also run him with like elusive and like Fen Rao. So you can, do those right maneuvers that had the elusive charge back. Um, so for assault, I would say he's an A tier. He is a medium base, so it does count as two. His ability makes him pretty defensible. And if you're doing assault, generally there's a lot of ships around you, and that's much easier to get his ability off because they just have to be range one and two in their front arc. Uh, for chance, I would also, ooh, that's hard because he, he hits, he can hit really hard because his ability is also for offense and he has, you know, two agility, which is, it makes him pretty tough to beat. But when you half health him, uh, you give up three points <laughs> He needs seven points, and it's hard to work around him and scum. Typically, you're going to have a lower ship count. So for chance, I'll give him a B. Like, he's good. It's just you, your other ships have to do a little bit extra more work to ensure that you're cruising through that. For salvage, I'll give him C. I do like the evade link barrel roll action a lot. So uh, it's, I tend to, you know, frame that in that kind of thing. And, but his ability does make it pretty defensible, but also he's a medium base. So he's easier to, to shoot. So I think that makes just C. And then for scramble, I'd probably give him a B as well. He, uh, with force crew and stuff like that you can kind of waste your well waste you take the scramble action and he's an i5 so he can take it after other people but i think he really shines in assault the most yeah so i would do the same thing i will give him an a in 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 assault to me that's that, that makes sense um you don't have to really do anything with assault just be there um he's worth two base points so it it works out very well um, I were, I'm going to caveat this. So for chance, I'm actually going to go with a C. And I say that because he's very good at killing ships, but he is worth seven points and only has 20 loadout. If he had more loadout or was only worth six points, he would be, it, his, his stock levels go up. But because of how scum is uh, fractured right now, in my opinion, um, and not having a lot of strong support ships, um, my, minus Kanan and Gamut, like that's it. That's that's all you get, um, and that's seven points in itself. That was weird. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> did I did I did I lose y'all? No, you can still hear me. Okay, good. Yeah. Um. But the the idea here in having that right is that the problem is is like you said he he gives up the points is what he does 
and because he gives up these points and then can give up four more, you could kill him very easily. He's not like a survivable ship. I've watched people like three round Mando, no questions asked. I have two rounded Mando <laughs> against Zach more than one time <laughs> um, with some droids. And so I, I just feel in chance he's just not, it's, he's just not worth the points value. Um, I also give him a C in salvage um, for, for the exact same reasons you said. I, I don't feel um, he could pick that crate up. I just don't feel like he can. Um, and then I'll be honest, I'm going to give him a C in scramble as well. He does have the force health to be able to live, but at the same token, your goal and why you bring him is to murder and kill things. That's what you want to do. You want to kill him. You or kill with him. You don't want to um, bring him upon other people. So, be interested to see what JJ thinks. We should update yeah. that eventually. We will. I'll leave the open in in here, and uh, maybe next week he'll come back in and give us that that ranking uh, for it. So the next one we're gonna do is Nora. Is Nora two R's? Yep. Wexley. <laughs> That's right. And the Y wing. Changes Y wing. <laughs> um, so we're gonna go in and we're gonna do that one uh first. So I will since JJ started that one, why don't we give JJ the time for that? JJ, you wanna speak up? Oh, you're not here. Shit. <laughs> um all right, so JJ said he gives it a A ranking. And assault, uh, basically very good at being able to stay up by objectives. The ability of getting the free evade adds that evade to her her bar. I don't. How many points is she? Is she five points? She's five points. Yep. That's the problem. Yep. So she's five points in in the Y wing um, for it. He thinks that she's very good and very reliable. He gives her a B, a B and scramble. Um, she can claim an objective at a higher initiative, so she he thinks that's really good. With the ion cannon, it helps prevent uh, people from taking actions back. And she does have the ability to run that ion, ultimately. Then he said for salvage, he also gives her a B, because while not the best carrier, even with her defensive ability with the proper loadout, proton bombs, ion... You are a powerful tool to guarantee crates drop from other enemies. And then lastly, he gives her a B in chance um, because she's very good at holding on to her points for her, her point value. Because she is that odd point level, you only get the two points at first and you get to kill her to get the other three um, as well. So what is your takes, Alex? So I have played a lot of Y-Wing Nora uh, before 2.5 and she can be just a pain to kill. Like if you're shooting at her two dice, like from your droids, you, there's nothing there. Good luck. But in 2.5 being at five points, that that's a tough ask in rebels. Cause you got all the U wings at five points. You got a lot of the really good X wings at five points. So it's, uh, she might be good individually at certain objectives, but like, you're not going to find her in a list hard to do but that being said i think she is actually um i put a for assault the assault tends to make people gravitate towards the objectives obviously that's the whole point and then her being next to enemies is what enables her ability and typically you would have something like an ion turret or proton bombs on there and that's really annoying if you're trying to go to an assault spot and there's a bomb right there so um, next up for chance. See, that's the problem is like she could be good. Um, I'd probably say B. Like she she gets the evades if she's in the scrum and but also not taking a lot of shots. She can be very good. Uh, but also she only has one health or, or one agility, sorry, and eight health. Uh, so you actually, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'll stick to a B. <laughs> I'm right. not gonna. I'll, I'll keep that. Um, 
what's next? Salvage. I probably I'd give her a B. She doesn't reposition much. Uh, but the main downfall is being one agility. If you are not at range zero to one of someone else, you are probably gonna drop that crate. And last up, uh, scramble. Uh, I'd give her a C. Yes, she doesn't need the actions really to take the objective, but she's, I mean, you're not using her as a flanker. You're not using her as an objective getter. You're not, she's slow, you know, or four straights red. So you're <laughs> not going to be gunning for scrambles. And if you do, she's out of the fight and that takes her whole ability away. And the whole point of why you brought her. But she could be survivable, so it's like, uh, I'll give her a C. All right. So for Assault, um, I give her a B. I think, yeah, great. She could be around there. She could be a deterrent. That's great. But for five points, are you putting on a lot of damage or are you just living? Right? Are you just going to live, sit here and live? Or are you going to actually, you know, be able to put out some some damage aspects? So, uh, to, to, I don't know. I don't think very highly of Nora Wildwing. I guess and I guess I'll just be honest to tell you that right now <laughs> um, for chance. I give her a C. Um, yes, she is only five points, but again, is her output? Is she going to be able to take down five points with her? Is she a good trade piece? I don't think so. Personally in chance, I think she can get half pointed very easily and people can fly away and say, we don't care about you. Um, and there's no way for her to gather objectives or do anything. Um, which is hence why I gave her a better grading in Assault, because she can still go just collect. You don't want to shoot her? Fine. She'll just go collect objectives, whatever. <laughs> just, gonna, just go do her thing um, and not care. Um, she can also be deterrent with those bombs. But again, there's only so much you can be deterrent, and like at some point you're not going to be super deterred by it. And if you, like, again, if you're a Luke, you get ionized, but you're at range one of her, you're still throwing four dice at her with a focus and two forks. And yeah, you take a proton bomb. That's going to suck, but she's only got two and thermals aren't guaranteed. So you like, I don't know. Like it, I, it, to me, it's just not, again, I love the survivability. I think it's super fun to run, but, and she is annoying. <laughs> she is kind of a negative oh, man. experience like, sometimes. A too hard, or like drop bomb, too hard to reload, drop bomb, too hard to reload. I used to do that with Nora. It was, it, was, it can be bad. <laughs> yep. Um, for salvage, um, I give her a C as well. You, you, you get the free evade, but I don't know. You're, you're just not. I don't. You're, you're just. You don't want to pick up a crate with her. A crit is still a crit. A proton torpedo is still a proton torpedo. If you drop a proton, proton bomb, you get bumped. You're screwed, right? You drop a thermal, you get bumped. You possibly are screwed. You cannot maneuver out of the way of mines. Um, you know, so I, I don't know. So there, I, I don't see even in, even there for salvage her wanting to pick up a crate at all. Um, and I will say for scramble, <laughs> I am going to give her a D. Like I'm, I, I, I would give her a C minus, I guess, if I could, if I allowed myself to have those ratings, but I don't. So. I give her a D in scramble because, like you said, she's not going to get up there very fast. She has to fly with the pack. If everybody has to fly with her, she has, you know, like, she you have to all stay together. You just are all there. And I just, I don't know. Like, it just takes forever to get to where you need to get to. And, yes, she's annoying <laughs> to kill, but... If if you're her, are you gonna is that the only action you're gonna take? Now you're not putting out any offense, and yeah, so you could just one hard right around, you know that you could two hard around that objective and kind of stay by that objective and take it each turn. You could take it each turn from them, but if you're if you spend three turns taking it and then die, was the three points worth your five points and you took nothing else out? I don't know. You have you lose your offensive output with scramble and you have no soft mods at, at all other than the, the the evade if you're at range one. And I feel like I would just take a range three proton torpedo, one hard or one forward, and take a second proton torpedo into her, and she doesn't get her free evades anymore. There's eight dice. I don't know. Yeah, I think this is like this is a one person who looks much better on like this kind of grid 
then she actually plays because I would not choose Nora in any rebel list by and large. Like I'd, I'd have to be some sort of weird, weird gimmick to do that. I don't know what I would do. They'd have to like ban the entire X-Wing chassis in order for me yeah. to bring it. I mean, you can now take Boy Wedge, right? Which yeah. I don't even... Are we allowed to call him Boy Wedge? I mean, technically he's Boy Wedge. And like, Boy Wedge is going to trade up five yeah. points. Yeah, you're an I-5, same as her. I, I think Boy Wedge trades up here. So like, you take Wes Jansen. We just talked about Wes Jansen, so... And um, a U-Wing pilot. Yeah. Like it's that's a long list of things that I would take in front of her. That's that's the only thing. Like I, she might be individually good at objectives, but she, she's not good at uh, building lists. Yeah. All right. So the next one is second sister. Um. So second sister, I wanted to do uh, comes in at what did I say? Five points and fifteen loadout, right? I think it's five, five points, 15. fourteen loadout, fourteen loadout. Ah, lost my other load. It's quite a bit for an interceptor. Yeah, yeah, that's like soon tier fell loadout level there, baby. That that's is one a point shield cheaper. upgrade and juke. Yeah, <laughs> that's all you take. You just shield upgrade, juke, whatever. You're gonna always take an evade. You're always <laughs> do your evade boost, evade barrel roll, whatever. Um, but she is native to force points, and she does have the ability if her force points are active to take crits. Um or to get dish out crits. So that I think is actually really good um, on her. But what do you think, Alex? What, what would your rankings for, for seven sister be? So I believe second sister is actually a, a underrated piece of the empire. The only problem is that like you could take second sister or you could take like Iden and the tie fighter. <laughs> um, that's like the only problem or shave one part of the, one piece of your squad and then bring her up to like boy Vader. So she's kind of an awkward fit, but I, I like her a lot in assault. Uh, I would give her an a, she has, you know, one hards to stay around the objective. She does have three agility, the ability to take and evade and have two forces back up. And she's really fast if you need to get out of there to another assault area. So I like her a lot for assault. For chance, I would give her a B. If I don't think she, she can output a lot of damage just by being an interceptor, but she's also kind of like fragile. Like if you take like two damage, I mean, you you have like one health left, right? Or if you if you brought a shield upgrade, you still take two damage. You're half health. You give up two points. Um, I mean, I think she's good. It's just I I don't think she's that that good at chance. For salvage, this is kind of a tough call because on one hand, she's very good at generating crits, and crits is very good in salvage. But the second thing is, like, would you pick up a crate with her? <laughs> you you can. I mean, she's very fast. She can take the evade. She's got two, you know, two force. So you can run away with her. But, like, that's not why you're bringing a five-point interceptor. You're not doing it to, to run away from the rest of the list. You're bringing it in there to flank. So I would give her a C. Like, I, uh, again, she's good at generating crits. And she can take a crate. I just wouldn't do it with her. And for uh, Scramble, I would give her a B, actually. Um, she does have the force to back it up. But mainly it's just she's really fast and she can go somewhere else and like link off of it to a boost or a barrel roll. Uh See, it's just kind of a tough call. She's at a four, so it could be taken. I, she's, she's not good at an initial like scramble, but she's good at taking the other person's scramble and then flank with her. All right, cool. So let's go back to JJ. JJ, JJ gave her an A for assault because the high agility uh, ability to live around there. He put an A for scramble as well because she has the force 
able to deal with, you know, the ability to ha say, hey, okay, here we go. I'm here. I get a evade and my force. You can't, you know, you're not going to be able to touch me. Um, for salvage, he gave her a B because essentially you're not going to put a crate on her, but you could. And but you could go deal crits out. And then for chance, he gave her an A because uh, the force and the evade make you reliable and you're a good trade value. So now mine is probably a little bit different. Um, I said she's an S in assault. And I say that because she is, if you place your objectives correctly and your obstacles correctly, you can put her between two objectives twice and she will live. She will not die unless you focus fire on her. And if you're going to focus fire on her, Where's Vader? Where's Morna Key? Where's Faroff or whoever else? There's going to be somebody else punishing you for her. I can safely put her and run the obstacles through the objectives and collect the points and take the shots at who I need to. Um, so I feel hands down, like I just feel in assault, she does really, 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 really well. Um, Chance, I'm in the same agreement with you. I, I think it's a B for the exact same reasons you said. Um, I don't know. She just, if she was four points, it would be different. But with it being at that five point level um, and only having four health, you know, it's kind of a hard sell for me. Um, and like if she had four native hull, let's say, I would give her higher in chance. But with only having that three hull, you have to be a lot more cagey. You're easier to hunt down and you're harder to, you're, you you don't have the ability to just change force into, um, you know, blanks into, in, in, into evades. That's, you're this not, is the not how that works. Yeah. <laughs> like if that was, it'd be a little bit different, but you don't have that ability. Um, for salvage, um, I'm in agreement. I give her a C in salvage. Uh, you're not going to pick up a crate with, with, you, you could, I guess, but you're, you lose your repositioning and your three to four health. That's it. Um, that's all, all you have there. I will agree um, with JJ, though, and I will say in Scramble, I actually do give her a, a, a because you can take that Scramble action and you can hunt down other people that take the Scramble action. So you can either punish them or not, or, or not be punished for it. Um, you typically can live even through sustained shots for at least two rounds. Um, you're not quite a fin, I guess. Um, you're not quite a fin, but you're pretty, pretty close. So. All right. Why don't we move on to sicko? I think yeah. sicko's the next one. Oh man. I love sicko so much. Okay. For assault. Is, is it weird to give a Latin S tier for assault? Yes, but you can. So <laughs> it's your choice. Um, actually, I would. I, I love, I love lats and assault. They're medium bases. They can hold two to three. He has a stop. You can, like, he has sickening maneuver. His one banks lets you cover the area for assault while also still maintaining your arc. Uh, and he's, he can be survivable. He's got 10 health, granted it's one agility, and it reinforces red. But it's, it's, once he is at an objective, you are not moving from that objective in assault. <laughs> like, I, I've gotten the, ooh, so many points from lats in assault. Um, for chance... It kind of depends on how you build this lad out. Uh, to me, there's a couple different ways. I do like Dedicated, despite his ability. Uh, I do play him a lot with 7th Fleet and Agile Gunner. But you can do like a Barrage Rocket uh, with like 5s or a Barrage Rocket with like Agile Gunner. Or like a, you know, Diamond, Boron Missiles, Wolf Pack, whatever you want on him. Uh, so he's very good... I mean, it's a lattice, it's a support piece. He enables everything else to be better. I think he'd be an A at chance. He's not doing a lot of damage, but he enables the rest of your list to do all damage and chance. At salvage, I would put... Um, I, would, I would do a C. 
he doesn't have reposition. Um, and he's pretty easy to hit. But if you ever tried to pin down a side slipping lat with a crate, it's very difficult to do. Like I think any other lat would have like a D for for um, salvage for him. I would put it at C just because he can do those side slips. And for scramble, he's a D. I mean, you don't need to do his action. That's that's fine. Um, but if he even has the action, like he's stressed half the time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he's not going out and getting him. He's an I2. He's not. You don't bring him for scramble. That's that's probably fair. <laughs> <laughs> um, So I am not going to give him an S tier for assault. Um, Coward. I'm sorry. I do not agree with that. I do agree with you. Um, That time on assault is high. It's kind of like an HMP. It has the health of an HMP or actually more. It has the ability to do the side slip every other turn. Um, so I, I'm going to give it an A in Assault um, because it's a medium base, and if you set your objectives up right, you can go into one and side slip into the other one and still be able to get your rockets off or your Diamond Boring missiles or whatever you're flying nowadays. Um, and at minimum, it gives you the ability to create rerolls. I will also give him an A in chance. I agree with you, you know, in chance for the points. Um, if you want to invest in killing him, he's taking a reinforce. So um, I, if the Mandalorian crew existed for two points in, in Republic, they would be broke. These lats would be broken because you would just take a white reinforce half the time. That's just what you would do. You don't have to pay nine points for Plo Koon to get it. Yeah. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> um, yeah, they should actually bring. Uh, no, never mind. I don't want to say that because that you don't want to give somebody a force for cheaper than that. You just don't. Um, anyway, so I gave him an A in chance because I still think that if you do invest the time into killing him, you can. Is if a good Republic player is going to punish you for doing that though, you're going to get punished. You are not taking that ship off the board in one turn typically. That that's a pretty hard ask. And if that Republic player is seeing three or four munitions coming in at them, they're just taking a reinforced token. That's what they're going to do. And it's going to cut it down. Um, For salvage, I don't know. You don't want to pick up a crate, in my opinion, because you got one agility. So I would give it a C as well. Um, And I agree with you. It's a D in scramble because you're with that specific lat, you're almost always stressed. Um, which is weird because I don't know. You know what? I'm going to change it. I think maybe it's a C in scramble. I'm going to go with a C in scramble. That's what I'm going to do. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with a C in scramble because I think, I think you can take it and you can, you are an I2, but you can do your sickening maneuver around the you know obstacles and you can block people from taking that obstacle action or the the action so i'm going to be a little bit more favorable and scramble and say it's a c so i'm just wondering what my lat's doing around one of those scramble satellites and not helping out my people <laughs> <laughs> well everybody else is converging in on it because somebody wants that point so all right i need to wear lungs <laughs> <laughs> The last pilot we have is from JJ, um, and it's Muse. And Muse is an I-2, right? Um, Muse is an I-2. And what is Muse? What is, I don't even know. What, what is Muse worth? It's, uh, three points, nine loadout, just tech and modification. It's kind of rough. Muse used to be very, very good in 2.0. And even like earlier, 2.5. You can build some nice things around Muse. Uh, there's a lot of things in the FO uh, faction that likes stressing themselves. Uh, they have a lot of linked actions kind of thing. So, and the old side shuttle and all that kind of stuff. So Muse was uh, pretty good uh, for that kind of stuff. But in, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I guess I'll just do the rankings because I'm already talking, right? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Um, for Assault... I mean, it's a TIE fighter. It has four health, three agility, 
solid, but there's not much you're taking on there. Like I don't I don't even know what I would load out with Muse. I guess you could take like deuterium power cells, which is kind of funny to me. <laughs> but it'd probably be like I don't even know. I don't I don't know what loadout I would do for Muse, and that's that's interesting to me. Uh, so I would say C for assault. I mean, it gets it's fast. It gets there, but it's not doing anything that I would say is making its uh, assault better. I guess the best case scenario is you're helping other people for assault, but and yeah, uh, yeah. A lot of what holds this ship back is that there are significantly better three point tie fighters in the FO faction than Muse. Uh, for chance. I would probably give it a C. I mean, it's it does enable some other combos in the FO faction, but it's also a TIE fighter, so it's not doing a ton of damage. But it's kind of living around, and it's only three points. Um, salvage, I would actually give it a B. Um for, for Muse, I guess I would have to do like Pattern Analyzer because Muse's ability actually works on herself. So if you have like something like Pattern Analyzer, you could still do a sloop or whatever and get a, a focus or an evade. Uh, you don't do a lot of repositions with a TIE Fighter. Um, so yeah, B, B sounds fine. And then for Scramble, I mean... I would say C. I have an extreme mistrust of three agility ships with low health and um, no force backup to take free actions and not get punished for it. <laughs> so. All right. And what did you give it for assault? A C. Yeah. I think it's just an average ship all the way around. Except for in salvage, you can do something with it. A lot of it is it's a support piece, so it's kind of hard to gauge how well it'll do with this but you're not I want to I want to stop talking cuz I have a lot of problems with the uh, 3 point FO ships that aren't I'd yeah, much rather take any other one values like that's just a weird loadout value right and you just the tech take... and mod yeah you have no talents i yeah mhm so jj gave it a c at assault that they're not a good offensive piece, but it can work at blocking to place the enemy for actions. Um, scramble, he gave it a B. The lower initiative can grab objectives early and still provide assistance uh, with targeting sync to help enable ordnance shots. But if you put targeting synchronizer on, that's three points. You have six points. You can you, yeah, cool. What are you going to do? Angle deflectors. I, there we go. Actually, that would be hilarious, and I had <laughs> thought about that. Um, anyway. Uh, then he said, with, uh, what, what did we do? Scramble B, Salvage. Salvage, he gave it an A, though. So Salvage is the lower initiative. The cargo stays for most of the fight. Three agility can be hard to pin down. Um, and then B... While it does not contribute, B for chance, it doesn't contribute to the fight. It opens the dial up to other shifts to night fight. Um, and he must really love target synchronized because he's got that in there for everything. But why? Like, it doesn't have any ordinance or anything. <laughs> so you take the target lock and let other people and just leave it there the whole time? I, yeah. You got a modless, defenseless FO pilot? Cool. I did figure out what I would put. I'd probably do pattern analyzer, precision ion engines. But precision ion engines don't matter. I know, but what else am I going to do? Baffle? I guess that's technically true. Yes, I would just put baffle. I, I would just put baffle and move on. <laughs> I don't know. It needs an illicit so I could have dead man switch. That's what it needs. You just have to bring Terex for that. <laughs> have fun. <laughs> all right. All right. Fair enough. But nobody wants to run Terex at, at five I, points. I agree. All right. Um. So for assault... um. I I believe for assault, it, I guess I'll go with C. It it does have survivability, but really you're not putting any output damage out, and you're just kind of sitting there. I, I again, you can remove the stress, and I think that's really good because then it allows for somebody like say a, a Kylo to do a one hard next turn to stay in the fight. 
I do think that might be beneficial, right? Yeah. Now, where's Cody when you need Cody? Uh, Cody did run Muse for a little bit. Never mind. It's at the start of engagement. It's not yep. at the activation. I okay. <laughs> so all right. So there's that. Um, with chance, I will give it a B in chance because it's only three. It's only worth three. You don't. You can use it for whatever you want. It can be 100% a support ship. Um, for salvage. <sighs> In in that faction, it's a B, I guess, because it can carry a crate. You could get it right at the beginning, but then you're not using its ability, and it just feels like there's better three. I'm giving I'm I changed my mind, and I'm giving it a C because there's other three point of ships that I could take over that that ship, and for scramble, I actually give it a D. Like I, I don't feel, I don't feel that ship can do much. I guess with with that ability, right? You know, and I say that because you could take it, but you're an I two. They're gonna take it back. Um, you don't have enough damage output to punish somebody for not taking it. I I just I don't know. Like I could take Scorch for three points. Why would I take? You could take Scorch and DT <laughs> and Malaris and oh that other lady that just came out, uh, Gallic. Gallic, yeah. Yep. Yep. It, yeah, like maybe if it had like a spaces. cannon or some talent slot or missile slide, like right, give me a missile slot and I, I the the rating goes up for me because at a missile slot you can have right the ability to take your like I don't know cluster missiles would be a good one or you could take I hate saying concussion you just take concussion so if he has nine points. She has nine points, so you can take concussion missiles, and then you have four points left over. Then you can so do you, your then targeting you can't synchronizer stuff. Pattern analyzer, yeah, but you can take sync there, whatever. Right, like, like pattern analyzer is incredibly good at Muse because she does remove the stress that she gets from doing that right maneuver for pattern analyzer. So you can yeah, just see, like continue slooping around the board if you wanted to, but like that's not useful anymore. <laughs> no, you're right. It's not, you can do that. You could do that. So. You can, I'm sorry. This is really hard. You can do that, and would you get double actions because you clean your action before you maneuver? So you take a focus, you sloop, you remove. But no, you it doesn't. No, you can't because you don't remove it till the fucking engagement mm -hmm. phase. So it's not like anything else. So if it had a talent or a missile slot, this would be a lot better. I need a missile slot or a talent slot on this ship. This should be the two point ship. There you go. Let's lower the loadout down because we don't care to five oh. points. Mm. And give you a two point ship in, in FO. There we go. I like it. I, I just give them TN 3465. You're trying to do a two point oh, ship. At least you kill that. It gets killed by its own self. No. 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 <laughs> You're just sad Republic doesn't have two point ships anymore. I'm sad you, that most factions don't have two point ships anymore. Could you imagine uh, the two point ships nowadays in Republic? I just. Remember when Contrail was two points back in the good old days when AMG didn't know what they were doing and Contrail was two points? Oh, I did so many dirty things with two point Contrail. Oh but God. I actually remembered that Contrail is an ability, apparently, unlike most other people. Yeah, most people do not. Well, all right. Well, we are not going to cover list archetypes. Um, <laughs> we are already at 1030. I didn't realize it was so late and I have to get up early tomorrow. Uh, because I have a, my brother-in-law has to go to the doctor, so I need to actually get up early for work and get some sleep and uh, make sure that I could take my brother-in-law to the doctor. <laughs> so um, we'll just move the list archetype uh, discussion till next week. I promise we'll do it next week. Um, I really just don't want to rush that those segments. I really think they're valuable segments. So yeah, and I feel um, like JJ should have should be in there as well. You know, nah, you're 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 too. You, <laughs> You, you, I already invited you back on. You don't got to be nice. You don't have to be nice to JJ to come back on, Alex. I already invited you back on for the duration of the next couple of months at minimum. So, like, you don't have to be nice to get back on this show. You can say whatever shit you want about JJ. Look, Start dunking Greg, on Muse and Nora. <laughs> yeah, if Greg was in the chat, he'd be bitching about, you know, JJ right now. Um, so yeah, I, I, I just want to make sure we give it some time. And I say that because. Um, I have actually had some players um, that I've met through Discord come up, not come up personally to me, but like 
voice to me like in person um on discord that they enjoyed the chess wing segment so i really want to make sure i put the effort into um into the list archetype segment that we put into that one and i just want to make sure we do that do do what it's due diligence and make it right so and those are like evergreen podcasts too right it's not like a list archetypes ever going to be irrelevant regardless of what matter we're in so yeah, it's very that's important very true. that the music get done real well yep the only one that will ever matter is like the last the last one we do, the last one or two that we do when we actually go over lists, those are the only ones that will change. And the idea behind it will never change. It's just the ships that are in there will change. But the idea behind it never will. Unless AMG decides to like get rid of it. Like we were very worried they're going to get rid of swarms. Um, I was, I was one of the guys yelling about that. And then I took a swarm in Republic to, to Adepticon. So they didn't get rid of it. It didn't die. <laughs> it just CIS wasn't the only swarm faction, unfortunately. Which was sad. I like my <laughs> CIS. As you all know. But so next week we will be back next week, 9 p.m. Eastern time, and we will be talking. Is this Super Bowl next weekend? It is. We should probably not do that on that Sunday. <laughs> all right. So <laughs> Yeah, you're right. I don't know. So I'll tell you what. If you would be interested in listening, or is it, all right, we're not going to do it. That I know JJ won't be here. That song. I just know for a fact he's. I guess he might be a little butt hurt. His team didn't get in. I'm used to it. My team never gets in. So, <laughs> and I don't really care about football personally. So, I don't even know if I like. Last year I was on the way back from a buddy's house, so I didn't even like. I watched like the second half when I got home. My wife was in school. And she was taking some tests. And so I sat in the living room by myself with um, a large pizza and a couple of green cigarettes and watched football and just kind of laughed at the commercials. So, you know. You missed the Detroit Rams win the Super Bowl. Did I? Fuck, I thought it was the Tigers. I don't, I didn't know that. I thought the Tigers were in. It's all right. So we are going to concede. We are not going to do it on Sunday. We will find, uh, we'll do it either Monday or Tuesday next week. We'll probably do it Tuesday. Tuesday's Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Maybe we'll do it Saturday. All right. I'll tell you what. We're off air. We will take this off air and have a conversation with JJ because I do not want to stream on Super Bowl night, even though I don't know how many. I don't know how many people are like X-Wing fans and Super Bowl fans. I have no idea. So oh, I'll be watching I don't... the Super Bowl. Like, I, I am okay, not so available. That's you won't be here. All right. There you go. I thought you like X-Wing more than sports, Alex. What the hell? I mean, Where's I your do, Star Wars this? It's still the Super Bowl. I'm still gonna watch it. Yeah. That's how <laughs> you can tell that's how little I care about sports. <laughs> that's, maybe that's a sad admission on my behalf, but um but no, a lot of times my parents will get together and they like if my parents get together and then have a bunch of cool good food, like it's gonna be hard not to go over there. So so I don't know. So we're not gonna we we will figure a day out. I will announce it in our Discord instead of wasting your time here uh, while we debate what day we're gonna do it. Um, we will either do it will definitely not be Thursday. So I don't know. My wife my wife's in school Thursday night, so like I don't get my Valentine's Day night at all. Um, because my wife's got you, you got to go to school. So um, we'll figure out a day though. We'll figure out a day. We will have a podcast next week, and it'll either be Saturday. Monday, Wednesday, or Friday. <laughs> Maybe we'll do it Saturday. Saturday sounds like a good, a good thing. But we will get a podcast out for, excuse me, for everybody on that day next week. Even if we have to pre-record it, we will make sure we get you some content. All right. Well, thank you, Alex, so much. Alex is from the Bespin Bench Warmers. You could check their link out in our description if you'd like to listen to their podcast. They either had a podcast last week and didn't edit it or did not do one last week because uh, we did record one. It hasn't been released yet. And I'm working on why that isn't the case, but we did record one. It's there eventually. It'll be out. So soon. hopefully this week we'll get a Benchman's Bench Warmers podcast going. But with that being said, we're going to end the show. We will be back next week. What are these times? And I'll probably be, uh, if you have a Kyber game you would like streamed um, on Wednesday, I know Greg doesn't stream on Wednesdays, I will happily stream Kyber games on Wednesday and on Friday if you have them. You can let me know or you can post it in the sheet and I'll pick them up as they come up. 
With that being said, thank you all. Have a good night, and we'll see you on the flippity flop. Thanks for listening.